Hello, this is Chef John from FoodWishes.com with Cranberry Stuffed Game Hens. That's right, Game Hens is the official name for these. But with your help, I'd like to rebrand these as Micro Turkeys. Because when Thanksgiving rolls around, these could represent a small solution to a big problem. And we'll get into that a little later. But for now, let's get started right after I apologize for reminding you about the holidays in the middle of summer. So inappropriate. But anyway, let's get rolling and we're going to start off with the stuffing. And of course, we're going to need some dried or toasted bread cubes. And I made my own out of this walnut bread, which I think is a great choice here, although any bread's going to work. So I cut that up in cubes and dried it completely in a low oven. Okay, that stuff's got to be bone dry and not living bone. That's still kind of moist, like old desert skeleton bone. Okay, so our bread cubes are ready and it's on to the rest of the stuffing, which starts with melting some butter in a saucepan on medium heat. And when it melts, we're going to toss in some onions. I'm going to use a combo of scallions and shallots, since theoretically this is for a special occasion, but any onion's going to work. And we'll also toss in a big pinch of salt, and we'll saute that for about three or four minutes, just until those shallots start to turn translucent and soften up a bit, at which point we're going to add a handful of dried cranberries, which I have to admit I generally loathe, but here they work amazingly well. So we're going to stir those in, and we'll cook those for about two or three minutes, just to kind of warm them up a little bit, and also give our onions a little more time to get golden, and at that point, we're going to dump in some chicken stock or broth. So we'll stir that in. We will crank our heat up to high. And all we're going to do is wait for this to come up to a simmer. And when we see it bubbling like that, what we'll do is we'll turn off the heat and quickly pour this over our dried bread cubes. And we'll give that a stir with our spoon for a minute or two until it looks like most of the liquid was absorbed. And then it's time to season it up. So let's go with a little bit of freshly ground black pepper, some salt, of course. I'm also going to put in a little bit of dried sage which for some reason some brands call rubbed sage. But anyway, a pinch of sage. And then I'm also gonna do some freshly picked thyme leaves and some freshly chopped rosemary leaves. So sage, rosemary, and thyme, very, very traditional stuffing herbs. And then one thing not so traditional, some cayenne, although that is traditional here. And then I'm gonna give that a mix for no apparent reason because there's more going in here. So I'm gonna drop in one beaten egg. That's gonna kind of bind this together. So we'll go ahead and mix in the egg. And then what I want to do is cover this with plastic and let this sit for about 15, 20 minutes to give those bread cubes enough time to really soak in all that liquid. So it's not a deal breaker. You can stuff your game hens right now, but I really think it comes out better if you let this sit a little bit. Plus, we need time to prep the hens. And there they are. We have two game hens. Those are about a pound and a quarter to a pound and a half each. They should come pretty much ready to use. But one extra thing I like to do, I like to cut the wings off right where the drumette stops and the flat of the wing starts right there. And you can actually toss those into a little stock and simmer that while your game hens are cooking. And we're actually gonna use that later, okay? So I'm gonna trim my wings, that's optional. You don't have to do it. Maybe you don't want yours to look as nice. How do I know? And then before we stuff these, I am gonna season the cavity thoroughly with salt. I guess you can use pepper too if you want, but make sure you get some in there. There's nothing worse than an under seasoned cavity. And at that point we can grab our stuffing and start stuffing. Hopefully that's fully hydrated by now. And you should notice it being a lot denser and stickier than when you first mixed it. And we're going to grab a handful and we're going to start shoving it in. And I think unceremoniously would be a great description. There really is no elegant way to do this. So just pack in as much as you can possibly pack in. And you know the rule of thumb. If someone's watching you, it should be really, really awkward. That's how forcibly you have to stuff these, okay? And then once those are stuffed, we're going to go ahead and tie the legs together. You could use some kind of fancy butcher knot or just tie the legs together. And once those legs are fastened, I'm going to turn the pan around. What I like to do is kind of push those legs down a little bit. That's going to kind of hold that stuffing in. And those birds be stuffed. And I was working in this pan so I wouldn't make a big mess. But I'm also going to roast them in this. So I'm going to pull those out. I'm going to wipe the bottom. I'm going to drizzle in a little bit of oil. And then I had a few spare herb sprigs, which I'm going to line the bottom with. That will add a little extra flavor, plus make your kitchen smell really good. And then we'll plop our hens on top. And then before they go in the oven, I'm going to brush these with a little bit of oil. I'm using olive oil, by the way, in case it matters. And we will also generously salt the surface. And when those are seasoned, we're going to go ahead and pop those in the center of a 400 degree oven for about an hour or until cooked to your liking. Of course, you're going to double check with the thermometer if you want to be safe. And when they come out, they should look like what I joked about earlier. Two little micro Thanksgiving turkeys. I mean, how else would you describe those? What's that stuff, game hens? No, that's not as good. So what we'll do at this point is transfer those to a plate to let rest for about 10 minutes, loosely covered with foil. And we'll go ahead and place that roasting pan back on medium heat and make a little pan sauce or pan jus if you prefer, using the fond that caramelized onto the bottom. Oh, you know we're fond of fond. 
And to contrast that stuffing, which has the walnuts and those tangy cranberries, I'm going to do something on the sweet side. So I threw in a splash of maple syrup, along with a little handful of fresh cranberries, if you have them. All right, if you're making this around the holidays, you probably do. And a little splash of stock or broth. And all we need to do is bring this to a simmer and let it reduce for about five or six minutes until it slightly thickens. Okay, those berries are going to kind of collapse. And once it gets down to about there, we're going to turn off the heat. And we should check for seasoning. So I'm going to give it a taste. And I adjust it with a little salt and pepper. And of course, if you want, you can swirl in a little piece of cold butter. Oh, you've seen us do that before. I'm not going to because I didn't skim any of that game hen fat. So this was plenty rich enough for me. But you decide. You're the boss of your micro turkey sauce. And at that point, we're ready to serve. And I do usually serve the sauce on the side so you can kind of spoon it over as you eat. But you know i got to take some pictures. So I decided to spoon some over, kind of shine up the skin a little bit. And I'm going to go with the whole bird here because it looks impressive. But a half one of these is definitely a good portion. And that cranberry stuffed game hen is done and looking very, very holiday-ish. So let me taste this. And before I even get close to that meat, I have to taste the stuffing, especially that crusty caramelized surface that was outside the bird. Oh my, that was incredible. And then let me try some of this meat. Although in my effort not to move this out of the frame, I ended up cutting right through the cartilage, which is no big deal. It's actually good for your hair and nails, or in my case, nails. So despite being a little bit crunchy, that piece was super, super delicious, especially dipped in a little bit of our pan sauce. And then for my next bite, I decided to make things a little easier. And I went right for the fat part of the breast. And one of the great things about these little birds, in addition to being faster and easier, because they're so young, that meat is very flavorful and very moist. In fact, these are so good, every time I eat them, I always think to myself, why are we eating all these old chickens when these young ones are so delicious? So keep that in mind when the holidays roll around and you want to do something special that's not a giant stuffed turkey. Hey, sometimes you just have to think small, all right? So I really do hope you give this a try. Head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.